20 in Pennsylvania. Republicans added almost that many. Democrats still have an edge. But do you see this as a larger problem for your party? Are you worried this will hurt Democrats on Tuesday? Uh, oh, I, I mean, I, I don't think I don't think it's really an issue for, for, for Democrats. And I would like to point out that we have both uh, Democratic senators. I think that's the first time, think, maybe in the 60s, 50s. or uh, It's been so long that we haven't had two Democratic senators. And of course, we have a Democratic governor as, as well, too. So the Democratic Party is in, in really strong uh, position here in Pennsylvania. But, you know, when Trump is going to show up on the ballot, then that's going to make it very competitive as well, too. And now Bob Casey is going to absolutely win over that Connecticut man uh, as well. And it's been demonstrated in my cycle. Pennsylvania voters don't like, you know, uh, very rich, weird dudes that don't live in Pennsylvania. Uh, Dr. Oz is back in New Jersey, and I think uh, they... One moment. I totally forgot about Dr. Oz. What is it? What did Oprah do? She gave us Dr. Oz and Dr. Phil. Uh, something happened to both of them. Dr. Phil is just away with the fairies. He's, he's actually started his own media network. Things you don't hear. Must switch on to Dr. Phil's channel. Mm, okay. Probably the same as watching paint dry. But there again, you can watch a Trump rally, a thin difference between the two of them. Uh, but to Dr. Mehmet Oz, what a campaign. Right up there with Herschel. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, Carrie Lake or Carrie Fake. One thing you'll give uh, the former losing president of the United States of America, he's been able to identify so many public figures more commonly known as losers. But anyway, back to Fetterman with some fruity language. The individuals spend more time in Connecticut after Bob Casey, you know, kicks his uh, <laughs> uh, hit. Yeah, hit. Yeah. I get you. Uh, Senator, is Kamala Harris going to win Pennsylvania? Uh, I, I do. I do. And it, it is going to be it is going to be close. Uh, but she's definitely put she's put in the time here in Pennsylvania and she showed up all across there. We had an incredible uh, event in Erie, and she spent time across in Pittsburgh. Uh, we went to Johnstown, and now going to Allentown. I mean, she understands that you got to show up, and that's what she's done. And that's why you know it's you know we're in a position uh, to to carry Pennsylvania. Donald Trump has been laying the groundwork to challenge the election results. Uh, I just want to show one example, just one of what he is posting on Truth Social and saying elsewhere. We caught them cheating big in Pennsylvania. Must announce and prosecute now. This is a criminal violation of the law. Stop voter fraud. Not only have we seen evidence of his claims, local officials are saying it's not true. How worried about you, are you about what is going on? I mean, that is my question. How worried are you? Oh, I'm so, it, it made me tickle hearing that. I mean, it's, this, it's, it's the same shit that he played in 20. Uh, and that didn't go anywhere. Well, but you it know, also our, our election. But, but but that's that's why I'm asking you this question. How worried are you about uh, this uh, being uh, a repeat? Because he didn't win, but it caused a lot of problems. Well, I'm, not worried, I'm not worried about it. It's it's just like a thing. It's the same thing that he tried in 2020. And you know we had a, absolutely a secure election. And now there there was voter fraud in Pennsylvania, and it was a handful of re Republicans, and they. Had they had their dead moms voting for Trump, and I'd like to remind everybody that they were all caught and they were prosecuted. And now, and again, the, the Dan pa Patrick in Texas still owes me a, a significant a lot of money for for the reward uh, that he owes from 2020. There was no voter fraud. He tried, and I would just tell uh, him that uh, desperation is the worst cologne. And he, you know, I expect that he was going to do that. It's not going to be effective, just any more effective than it was in 2020. And anyone that, that platformed his lies, that was a very expensive kinds of habit as well, too. You know, uh, Fox had to pay over $800 million for those kinds of lies. And all of his supporters, you know, they were all dragged into court and they all turned their minds and they're like, oh, no, oh, no, uh, I'm so sorry that I lied. And remember the Kraken? The Kraken, <laughs> you know, and her defense was nobody takes her impossibly seriously. It's again, it's it's the same sad story that he had in 20. And I'd like to remind everybody that Biden wrecked his shit by 80,000 votes. And now we're going to be back in the same situation. He's going to try to lie and claim these baseless things. 
but now we're going to have a new team leading America, and that's going to be Harrison Walls. But it is going to be close. I was in Pennsylvania recently talking to Jewish voters. I want to play just some of what one told me about why she left your Democratic Party. I left the Democratic Party because in the current political climate, I do not believe they are seriously supporting the Jewish community. They are not seriously engaging with us. Now, I should say that she is voting for Harris because she says she can't stand Donald Trump. Uh, but that might not always be the case. What is your message to Jewish voters who are concerned about supporting Kamala Harris in Pennsylvania? 300,000 Jewish voters there. Well, I know we, we've had a, a conversation uh, about the situation in, uh, it, with Israel and Gaza and that situation. And, and I've even I've dis, I've disagreed with, with the president, anyone about this. You know, I've been a very consistent kind of voice throughout all of this, been on that side of uh, for I Israel. And now we have a diversity of opinion with the Democratic Party. And it's not po it is possible that that may have alienated some members of of the Jewish community. But but my voice is is only my voice. And I've been I've been committed. I'm following, you know, I'm going to follow Israel throughout all of this. So, so my opinion isn't really likely going to change. And it, it is absolutely an issue here throughout the election. But uh, I do think that it's going to make sure that it's going to be going to be very close. One of the most uh, prevalent Trump campaign ads has been attacking Kamala Harris for her stance on trans rights. The ad ends with a tagline, quote, Kamala is for they, them. President Trump is for you. Is that resonating in Pennsylvania? No, they, uh, again, it, it's, it's like if, if you if your political capital uh, you know, comes from picking on trans kids or gay kids or anything like that. That's you're just bankrupt throughout all of this. You know, my version, my version of being a being a man is is like, hey, I like uh, ribeyes, I like uh, Motorhead, uh, and I'm never going to pick on trans kids and 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 gay kids or things. And it's just sad that the other side choose to kind of pick on members of those community. Uh, and I've said this throughout my entire career. That if if you think that I have to turn our backs on their community, then you you can vote for somebody else. But uh, I'm never I'm unwilling to ever do that. Uh, and again, it's it's just it's just a warped version of it doesn't make you tough. It doesn't make you a man to pick on trans or gay kids. It just makes you an asshole. But politically, the Trump campaign believes that that has some resonance with suburban parents with uh, men in, in uh, the communities of color. You don't see that? Uh, no, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't speak, I don't speak about a members and their views of a member of a community. I'm not part of that community, but I, I'll, you know, my, my views have been very clear throughout all of this. And, but I will say though, that if you're willing, and if you think that's, if, if that makes you, you know, tough, or it makes you more edgy to pick on members of that community. Like I said, it, it's just sad, and it's just reflective of their desperation throughout this entire campaign. Before I let you go, when do you think we will have a result in Pennsylvania as somebody who was on the ballot two years ago? Uh, um, uh, well, I mean, uh, I, I think, well, like, for example, in all the votes, uh, uh, Allegheny County has done a, a magnificent job, you know, even in 2020. I mean, I'd like to remind everybody that's watching, uh, back in 2020, Pennsylvania just instituted brand new, brand new mail uh, voting. Mm -hmm. And then the Republicans refused mm -hmm. to, they refused to change the, the, the vote, uh, the, the, the law. They, they, they're not able to look at those kinds of ballots at 7 a.m. on election day. They refused to allow us to, to give it extra days to do that. Because the Republicans tried to create the, the mirage, the mirage out of Philadelphia. But I do believe that Philadelphia is not going to have the kind of a lag that we had in 2020 because there's no pandemic. And now we're, we're aware that what's necessary. Do you want to wager to guess when we're going to know? Uh, oh, I, I, I would say, uh, of course. Uh, again, I, I think uh, perhaps it's certainly not going to be like it was in 2020. It's not going to be about two or three or four days coming out of Philadelphia. I, you know, and I'd like to say Al Schmidt, Al Schmidt, who he was the, 
the hero in Pennsylvania in 2020 out of Philadelphia as a Republican, and now he's in charge of all that process here in Pennsylvania. So, you know, we have the right guy in, for the right time, and then I do believe he's going to deliver an honest, true reflection of the Pennsylvania voters. Uh Did you ask them to take your gas stove away because they were going to do that? With two days to go, uh, just to let you know what this channel is about, I'm clearly an outsider, I don't have a vote. So what we're trying to do is every 30 minutes, obviously I have to take my son out to the park and those sort of things from time to time, we'll bring you a roundup of what's gone on. Uh, clearly, Scott Perry has started Sunday off uh, having a normal one. We'll have some more of Scott Perry in a moment. But uh, there was a moment on SNL which they didn't show on TV. I thought, got to share this with you. I am Drew. I am Danny, and we are not the same person. <laughs> now, these people back here with all these cameras and lights and so on and so forth. That's right. We don't live in North Korea. We don't live in Russia or Cuba or communist China. We don't need their propaganda. We know what's going on in this country. We have had enough of the disrespect. The disrespect, right? This is our country. We don't just live here and do what they tell us to do. Now, there's been one guy, one guy that's been willing to stand up to them and all the people disrespecting you in our country, one guy. And for his willingness to stand up, they have tried to bankrupt him, they have tried to throw him in jail, and they have tried to kill him. Go ahead and scream it, keep screaming it, come on, come on. There are gonna be countless polls as we head towards one day to go, and then we get to election day. The one from Iowa, I suspect, is causing a few headaches within the Trump campaign. That you have been stumping for Sherrod Brown. He's in a really tight race against Trump-backed businessman Bernie Moreno. Why was it so important for you to lend your voice to this particular race? Well, of course, I'm from Springfield, Ohio, the, the infamous Springfield, Ohio, and I grew up in a, a family of blue collar workers. My dad was an auto factory worker, a UAW a union member, and uh, I just understand what the stakes are for families like mine. And I know the Sheriff Brown understands what they are as well. He cares about making sure we raise the minimum wage and make sure that uh, the Affordable Care Act is protected for workers and people who need affordable coverage. Uh, he cares so much about workers, and he always has. Anybody who knows uh, Sherrod Brown and has observed him over the years, he's always standing up for ordinary people. He's always standing up for working people, always talking about the dignity of work. And You've been very vocal about Donald Trump and his racist rhetoric after his comments absurdly about Haitians eating cats and dogs. We heard similar racist remarks at his Madison Square Garden rally last Sunday. How disgusted are you with Trump and the GOP's blatant continued dehumanization of immigrants? Well, of course, it's disgusting. And, uh, you know, it's not shocking in the sense that we've seen so much of this from Donald Trump for such a long time, his entire career in public life. He's been spewing hatred and division and particularly targeting people of color uh, as somehow uh, tainting the, the American blood and American gene mm. pool. Really, frankly, uh, very Nazi-related uh, rhetoric, eugenic-related uh, rhetoric. And uh, it's really hateful, it's really divisive, and uh, it's not what we need in a leader who's supposed to lead the entire country. Our country is diverse and beautiful, and folks come from all over the world to live here, and uh, we should have a president that wants to lead the entire country. Some could say a little bit too late. Uh, the Trump campaign are now desperately trying to get out the, uh, the female vote. This is um, former ESPN host who's now firmly within the Trump campaign. 
It'll take a few seconds while she has to scream and shout. So, uh, it's a word salad. You would actually think with two days to go, there would be a little bit of a message which uh, talks about stability in terms of jobs, uh, gives some reassurance about housing, about medical costs, something that you could uh, hold on to, but the message still seems to be a level of a... Uh, feel sorry for me, things are going really bad, and I may be locked up. That's what I get from the rhetoric. Well, I'll take another clip, just in case I'm wrong. Well, isn't it nice to know that the messages is coming through there uh, this Sunday, and that's not me making it up, is all about being able to post on Elon's platform and not being attacked. What a message to go into a campaign with. And you can tell this, because she's reading it, it's not off the top of her head, this all comes from the man at the top. Mm. But look, everybody's standing. Do you know what that, I mean, that's a sign of respect. Everybody's standing. So when they say, he gave a long and rambling speech, uh, let them know that before the end of the speech, by a little bit, everybody stood because they heard the truth today. They heard the truth, just like truth so said. They heard the truth. Again, the word truth. These are all great. I also want to recognize our great Amish community. We have, where are they? The Amish community. You know? They're a church. He's right. Well, there's a lot of spirit here, you know? And we even have the polls uh, up, but I think it's much more than the polls. No, the polls, I'm telling you, you can make those suckers sing. You get the right pulser, you can do, and you do, you really do inflict damage, you know, when you do like this person from Iowa. Today, the election essentially is really, we're talking Turkey, comes out with a poll different from every other poll, because it wasn't even in question. It's really the opposite way. I'm way up. If you look at three, four months ago, Dan, uh, I was losing states that now are walks. You know, they're now walks, and I think you're gonna have that here. They, it's called suppression. They suppress, and it actually should be illegal because it's, in many ways, it's worse than the written word, which these guys do quite well, actually. That's what they were fighting for. They need more assets because we have big rallies. You know, we have 50,000. Interestingly, during the debate, she said, oh, oh, and your debates don't really draw, and everybody leaves early. So then I go, I go, because when somebody says something, I think you have to refute it, right? I said, no, my debates never have an empty seat and nobody ever leaves early. Nobody has ever left early. These guys will tell you. A little bit of intelligence. And I have a piece of glass over here. And I don't have a piece of glass there. And I have this piece of glass here. But all we have really over here is the fake news, right? And to get me, somebody would have to shoot through the fake news. And I don't mind that so much, because I don't mind. I don't mind that. 